Grain.js is a JavaScript library that lets us easily create effects like this, where we have grain, and it's animated, and it's in JavaScript. It's pretty easy to implement too, so I'm going to show you real quickly how to do that. In the documentation provided by Saras Salim from Dubai, he doesn't include a CDN link that we can grab this from. So I went ahead and put that on my website here in the boost section right here. So all you have to do to get this to work is to copy this and all this below and put it in your Webflow project. Over here, I have a Webflow project. And within the settings of home, in the before closing body tag, I'm going to paste all of that stuff. I've also got inside the head tag, the style tag, with pointer events none. And I'll get to that in a minute. But if I save that, and I show you what's going on in the Webflow project here, I have an HTML embed. All this is, is an embed with a style, and I'm targeting the class of grain container, which is this element right here. And I'm giving it this really cool mesh gradient background that's on cssherorg slash mesher. You can randomize this and get something that looks really trendy and hot and click the export button and just copy all this stuff. And then all you have to do is drop that in here and you're good to go with all these fancy colors. Now, since the site's not published, we're not gonna see the grain effect or the animation that it has. But what's important is that we select that div and we give it an ID of grain. Because as we saw from our code, grained.js is looking for an ID right here as the first argument to this grained function. And then we're also passing options, which are all these options here. And I'll get into this in a minute. If I save and publish, we can see that we now have a cool animated grain effect. The reason I added this pointer events none is that the way grained.js works according to the documentation and inspecting is that a div element with class grained is added as the first child element was position absolute. This actually I didn't find to be true. If we inspect here, it actually uses a pseudo element. Let's see right here where it sets the background image to that grain texture with position absolute and no content and then 300% width and height and left 100%. And then it just has a CSS animation where it just probably jiggles it around a whole bunch. So that's cool. But if we wanna make it so that we can select text and have stuff appear on top of the grain, then this pointer events none is really key as well as setting Z indexes on certain things. So inside grade container, I have this text wrap and you'll notice in my styles for text wrap, I have it set to position relative with a Z index of five. That's so it appears on top of the grain. Other than that, Salraf Salim provided this really cool way to demo and create your own grain effect. You can see if you change the color, you can get different kinds of uh, textures here. And then he's got a generate your own button here. And I'm gonna bump up the opacity just so you can see it. The video has terrible processing, all this grain. So if I make it really, you probably wanna keep it really low something for your website, but just so we can show it. We can update the pattern width. We can update the pattern height. Uh, the grain density is an interesting one. The grain width, the grain height. So you can get these really different kind of textures. And then we can also change the background color by clicking here. And let's make it pink. It's pretty ugly, but let's bring the grain density down. The background color is still pink, but if we reduce the width, so it looks like it's using kind of a black dot texture to make it happen. So we've got to keep that kind of down. Anyways, and it, it will dynamically generate the code that you need to just copy and paste. Say you want to change those options. We can copy and paste this back into Webflow. Save and publish. 